we wanderers ever seeking the lonely way begin no day where we have ended another day and no sunrise finds us where sunset left us even while the earth sleeps we travel and the voyage began for modern indian shipping SS Loyalty first Indian ship sailed to United Kingdom from Alexandria dock of Bombay on April 5th 1990 This event is commemorated as a National Maritime Day of India every year on 5th April since 1964 History reveals a resplendent maritime trade and shipbuilding activities for over 4000 years around our peninsula and this was reason enough for the ocean to be known as Indian Ocean the only ocean in the world named after a country about 2300 bc lothal a prominent trade center of the indus valley civilization was believed to have the world's first tidal dock yukti kalptaru a treatise in sanskrit by bhoj narpati explains a technocratic exposition on the techniques of ship building for over 150 years wadia master ship builders dominated ship manufacturing worldwide during 18th and 19th century Mahatma Gandhi the father of the nation took his first job as a legal consultant for an Indian trading and shipping firm in South Africa In years to come the dream of Sudeshi shipping company was realized by Walchand Hirachand together with Narottam Moraji and Kishanchand Kilara he formed Sindhya Steam Navigation Company SS Loyalty The first ship of the company became the first Indian ship as well. On June 21st, 1941, Dr. Rajendra Prasad laid the foundation stone for the first modern Indian shipyard started by Sindhya at Vishakhapatnam, now known as Hindustan Shipyard Limited. Soon after independence in 1948, its first ship, Jal Usha, was launched by the Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The idea of sustained development of domestic shipping industry and shipyards by Lal Bahadur Shastri paved the way for the formulation of Indian Merchant Shipping Act in 1958 and the Directorate General of Shipping was established. We in the Directorate General of Shipping have been entrusted with the task of maritime administration and we firmly believe that we can be effective while we are regulating we also facilitate. We have taken a lot of policy decisions to make seafaring an attractive career option for the indian youth on october 2nd 1961 shipping corporation of india was established by the amalgamation of eastern shipping corporation and western shipping corporation for enabling the extensive public sector participation dr cp shrivastava was the first chairman of shipping corporation of india a visionary civil servant He was pivotal in maritime development, seafarers training and welfare. He served four consecutive terms as the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization. Shipping plays a significant role in the transport sector of the country's economy. Approximately 90% of trade by volume is done by sea. Over the years since independence, the Indian shipping industry has come a long way. From a mere 59 ships having a capacity of only 0.2 million gross tonnage today we are having more than 1150 ships with a capacity of about 10.5 million gross tonnage offshore industry in india was started in the late 1970s with the finding of oil in bombay high region indian offshore industry is on a high growth trajectory and is expected to grow at 30% cagr in coming years dredging corporation of india DCI was formed in the year 1976 to cater to the growing need of channel deepening at various Indian ports beach nourishment reclamation inland dredging and environmental protection maritime industry in india is a very very important industry both from an economic perspective and from a national security perspective we are committed in the ministry of shipping to ensure that the maritime sector gets the right impetus from the government so that we can move into the future with greater strength and resolve 
In 1927, the importance of organized training was recognized with the establishment of India's first training ship, Dufferin. The training of marine engineers was transferred ashore to a new marine engineering college at Kolkata in 1949, known as DMET, Directorate of Marine Engineering Training, with a branch in Mumbai. In 1953, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru inaugurated DMAT's new building. DMAT was renamed as Marine Engineering and Research Institute, MERI, in 1993. To replace aging Dufferin, on 2nd February 1972, T.S. Rajendra was delivered to then Prime Minister Mrs. Indira Gandhi by Hindustan Shipyard. In the early 80s, when the requirement of officers increased well beyond the output of T.S. Rajendra, a need for an onshore academy was realized and T.S. Chanakya was established in 1993. Lal Bahadur Shastri College of Advanced Maritime Studies and Research is also situated in Mumbai for post-sea training. In 1998, government allowed private training institutions to facilitate the growing demand of seafarers. Indian Maritime University, IMU, was formed in the year 2008, regulating all government maritime training institutes. Seafaring is an extremely tough and challenging life. The training of Indian crew and ratings was initiated in 1910 at T.S. Rehman. During the war times, thousands of our seafarers lost their lives. The Indian Sailors Memorial Hall in Mumbai commemorates more than 8,000 sailors who died during World War I and II and have no other grave but the sea. The professionalism of our sailors and industry leaders are acknowledged worldwide. This is our strength and we need to further build upon this. The last few years have been difficult for our sailors since many of them have been held captive by pirates. However, through coordinated efforts, both domestically and internationally, we have been able to tackle it effectively. Blessed with a vast coastline of 7,517 kilometers, India has an extensive network of inland waterways too. Tremendous opportunities exist in coastal shipping and inland water transportation. The sweat and hard work harness the dream which shines. The traditional ways of building ships are now replaced with advanced automated and computerized processes. Shipbuilding industry has also grown in India. Today we have more than 30 shipbuilding yards in the country, manufacturing all types of ships and vessels. Private shipyards are gearing up to cater the evolving demands of shipbuilding and ship repair. Our shipyards are now capable of building ships of over 300,000 DWT. There are 12 major ports and 187 minor ports acting as gateway to our country's trade. Indian port capacity has already crossed 1 billion ton and is constantly growing. The shipping fraternity can take pride in the fact that the ports and shipping sector handles 90% of India's foreign trade. We are indeed growing from strength to strength in terms of tonnage, port capacity and efficiency, traffic, etc. The tasks ahead of us are envisaged in the Maritime Agenda 2020. A strong merchant navy is important for any maritime nation. Pandit Nehru once said, I am impatient to see Indian ships carry the flag of India across distant seas to faraway countries. To become one of the top maritime nations, we have travelled far in our voyage. And the blinking lighthouse on the horizon beckons us to begin our new journey.